Kathleen Wright. Our team of correspondents are there covering the trial. It's the same courtroom, same courthouse, where former police officer Derek Chauvin was convicted of murder for the death of George Floyd in April. Court TV's Julia Janae will be joining us in just a few minutes. But first, the snake breeder murder trial. The defendant. Lindley Rennick is expected to take the stand in a matter of minutes in Missouri. She's accused of premeditated murder in the shooting death of her husband, Ben, a well-known snake breeder. Prosecutors say she planned and carried out this murder. This morning, she'll have a chance to tell the jury a different story. Here is the look at the moment yesterday outside the presence of the jury when Judge Kevin Crane asked Lindley Rennick, do you really want to testify? So, Mr. Hesselman, I've got your permission to inquire of your client as to her testimonial rights? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Rennick, you understand you have a constitutional right not to testify. You understand that? Yes. And do you understand that if you choose not to testify, that decision will not be held against you? And do you understand that the jury can and will be instructed, if your attorney wants to me to give that instruction, to draw no adverse inference from your decision not to testify? Yes. Do you understand that if you do choose to testify, the prosecutor's going to have the right to cross-examine you, and you know what that is, okay? Um, and that could include questions about any prior criminal convictions you may have, and I don't know if you've got any, but... That could be included, okay? Um, and do you do you want more uh, time to talk to your attorneys about this decision, whether or not to testify? No. Huh? You? No, I don't need more time to talk to them about this. Well, you think she does, don't you? I don't understand what you're... I was going to... Usually we do this during like the jury's out, they're coming in, I was going to ask, the question is, does she have adequate time to talk to her attorney about testifying or not? Yes, she has. She has? Yes. Okay. Well, do you want to testify? Yes. You do? Okay. And you understand everything I've gone over with you about that decision? Yes. And you understand that you should consult with your attorneys about that decision, but it's ultimately yours alone to make. Okay. We expect that the defense will have one, as they described it, short witness before the defendant, Lindley Reddick, takes the stand at the bottom of the hour is when the judge has asked the jury to return and court is expected to be underway. And as soon as there's any action in that courtroom, we, of course, will get you in live. Uh, it'll be fascinating to see how Lindley Rennick holds up on the witness stand. Joining us now, trial attorney Michelle Thomas. She's in Silver Springs, Maryland, and criminal defense attorney Jeffrey Wolf is in Denver, Colorado. Michelle, this is one that, you know, uh, most people thought no way she takes the stand because of the, well, her behavior, especially after her husband, Ben, died. She lied to everybody. She even implicated, she basically whispered to the police, you might want to check out his brother, Sam. Um, just behavior that is going to be, uh, I don't know how she responds. Uh, your thoughts on this decision by this defendant uh, at this point? Yeah, it's a really, really risky decision to have a defendant take the stand in any criminal case, particularly where there's murder uh, charges that are pending. And in this particular case, to your point, Ted, uh, and good morning to you, but to your point, um, her behavior post the the act reeks of guilt. And so that is the problem that she's going to have to overcome. She should expect a very rigorous cross-examination by the prosecution. It's a very risky endeavor, but I presume that she believes she has no choice or her lawyers um, certainly have probably have advised her, but she believes she has no choice but to take the stand. But it's a very risky decision that she is making given the facts of this case. Jeffrey Wolf, uh, this could be a Hail Mary. Let's face it, it's not going well for the defense in this case. Your thoughts overall on her taking the stand? And if you are representing her, um, how do you handle her in terms of prep for a cross? So basically, the decision is always going to rest with the defendant. So she has decided she's going to testify. And so that's what it is, right? You give them the advice, you let them know whether you think it's a good idea, and they make the decision from there. And given all of the witnesses that have come in and told this story of what she did in this case, it's pretty hard for her to not have the instinct to get up there and say, no, I didn't do that. No, that's not the way things happened. And 
also add on to that the guilty knowledge actions afterwards, she probably wants to explain that and it might be a good idea for her to do that. As far as preparing, there isn't a lot you can do to really get somebody to actually be ready for it. The best that you can do is find the meanest lawyer you know to come in and consult and play the prosecutor. So you do a mock direct and you do a mock cross and you just let the lawyer beat up your client as hard as you think the prosecutor is going to do. See how your client responds give tips on the emotion that's part of that, give tips on how to respond, how not to respond, uh, where you don't script what they're saying, but you script how they respond, what the emotional responses are, their body language, things like that, because juries are paying as much attention to that as the words coming out of their mouth. Michelle, she uh, seems to have a very soft voice. Her father described her as, as a meek person overall. Um, could she build up a little bit of a, a connection with even one juror to get the, them to think, you know what, I believe this person more than I do that Michael Humphreys who showed up with his handcuffs mm -hmm. and his leg irons. Um, there's a, an opening, is there not? Well, there's always a possibility, but let's put it this way. She absolutely has to build up a rapport with the jury. She has to garner a level of sympathy and get them to empathize with her and her situation as a an alleged battered wife, that is her responsibility when she does take the stand, because if she does not make that connection, uh, the jury certainly already has significant evidence against her to convict her. So her future, her fate absolutely depends on her ability to connect with the jury and compel them to empathize with her as an alleged battered wife. Jeffrey, what should we be listening for from the state on cross-examination? anything that they can do to poke holes in what she was doing, as well as their demeanor. What we've seen from her attorney is very, very aggressive cross-examination from the word go with all of these witnesses that are pointing the finger at the defendant in this case. And so the prosecution, if they're smart, is going to counter that by being a little bit softer, especially if she comes off as softer. Because one of the things that I've always stressed is most important in a trial is who the jury thinks they can trust and who they're going to believe as a result. And so if one side is yelling at the witnesses and the other side is doing an effective job of questioning them without having to yell, that is going to go a long way with the jury. Now, she may be a difficult witness and may cause them to have to badger a little bit, but it's going to be interesting to see if they try to adopt a softer tone, because I think they should. Yeah, and it's about reading the jury, too, is it not, Michelle? Um, Kevin Zellner, mm -hmm. Kelly King are the prosecutors. That's Kevin Zellner. We don't know who will be doing the cross. We do know that uh, Mr. Zellner has been very aggressive in pre-trial motion hearings outside the presence of the jury, um, and, and even to the point of sarcasm when dealing with Lindley Rennick. Kelly King, um, probably she did the open. It was very, to, to um, Jeffrey's point, she, she was very soft, if you will. Um, how important is it to whoever's doing it that they're reading the jury and they don't beat up the meek little Lin Lee? So it's critically important that you read the jury throughout the trial. You have to gauge whether the jury is um, involved and whether they're um, following your storyline, whether they are sympathizing or empathizing at all. Uh, with the witness on the witness stand. But in this particular case, it would certainly behoove the defendant to not be a difficult witness on the stand because of her, her uh, past history or of lack of candor, if you will, um, alleged in in her prior statements and um, what's come out, the evidence has come out so far. So it would certainly behoove her to try to be as straightforward as possible uh, to convey and bolster a level of credibility, and it would behoove the prosecution when they're cross-examining her to sort of match the tenor of her testimony and make sure that they're not too harsh to turn off the jury. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating chess match uh, being played out this morning. Again, we're expecting court to resume in about 20 minutes from now. There's one witness, according to the, the defense, before Lindley Runnick takes the stand. So um, we'll get you into the courtroom as soon as the judge is on the bench. But coming up, opening statements begin this morning in the other major trial that we are covering in Minnesota. It is Minnesota versus Kim Potter. We are live in Hennepin County next with our Julia Janae. Stay with us.